Hello and welcome to this session on trace tables. This is part of the IDCSE computer science syllabus of videos and in today's session we are going to be having a look at how you can complete trace table questions for flowcharts and also pseudocode. Now these videos are typically for the new syllabus which is up for examination in 2023 but the same questions have come up in the older syllabus which is up for final examination in May, June 2022 so you can use this whether you are going into examinations this year or you are going to be going into examinations next year now this is probably the most complicated flowchart question which has ever come up at IGCSC so far and you'll also be able to find it in the specimen paper for the new computer science syllabus from Cambridge now we need to identify the purpose of this algorithm here so at the top here we have got a one-dimensional array with some names in here and we have placed these names into row one of our table. So Jamal, Amir, Eve, and Tara are in row one. And then also at the beginning of our algorithm, we've got this process box with flag set to zero and count set to one. So these are gonna to need to be put into row number two of our table as we have already put our names into row number one, which are coming from our one dimensional array. Now, if you're not working with an array, any variables or constants should always be put at the beginning of the table, but in this case, we have put our pieces of data from our 1D array. Now, first of all, purpose of this algorithm, and it's always important for you to identify the purpose. So here we are looking at each of these individual pieces of data, and we're saying, is name count greater than name count plus one? Now, for some people, they seem to think that we are looking at the number of characters in the name, but actually this is just a simple bubble sort. We're trying to sort the names so they appear alphabetically from A to Z. So looking at the first part of this algorithm, we've got is name count Jamal greater than name count plus one. So we're saying here, should Amir come before Jamal if we are to, sub if we are to sort the uh, list alphabetically? And the answer to this question is yes. We need to switch over these two pieces of data. Now, the way that this works with an algorithm is we're going to need to put Jamal into temp. So you'll be able to see that Jamal appears in temp here. And then what we're going to do is name count is name count plus one. So we're going to take Amir and put Amir into name one here. Now that we switched over these pieces of data, we're going to need to paste Jamal back into name two. And Amir is going to be put into name two. And then we're going to change flag from zero to one. Now, flag is what allows us to actually terminate the algorithm, and you'll be able to see this a little bit later. What we now need to do is increment our counter from 1 to 2, and we're being asked, is count equal to 4? And my apologies for all of the background noise. It is currently break time here, so it's quite loud outside, and we've also got a manufacturing day happening next door as well. So, as count is not equal to 4, we're going to go back to the beginning of the algorithm, and we've got his name count greater than name count plus two. So we're now looking at Jamal and Eve, and E comes before J, okay? So what we are going to do here is we are going to do name count is gonna go into temp. So Jamal is gonna go back into temp over here. And then what we are going to do is we're gonna take Eve and put Eve where Jamal was in name two. And you'll be able to see that Eve is now here. And then temp is going to be put into index number three of our one dimensional array. And flag is not changed to one because it is already one. So we only increment our counter and we've got is count equal to four. Now at this point in the list, if we look at this, A, E, J, T, it's already in alphabetical order here. So when we get to this one here, is name count greater than name count plus one? The answer is going to be no. So we just copy and paste our piece of data into the same row so it's going to appear similar to row number one two three but count has been incremented by three here we have got count is count plus one so we've now got count incrementing to four remember amal eve jamal tara and jamal are still inside temp here so temp is not changing is count equal to four the answer is yes and what we now need to do is identify is flag zero so flag is boolean either zero or one, and we're using this to terminate our algorithm here. So as it is not zero, we now have to go back to the beginning of the algorithm, and we get 
flag is zero, count is one. So flag is now at zero, is name count greater than name count plus one. It's going to be no increment counter, count is not four. So we're going to continue iterating this until count is equal to four. And then we're going to say is flag equal to zero. And the answer in this case is yes. And this is how our loop is going to terminate here. So we're using flag to end that forever loop. Now, hopefully this is nice and straightforward. And what we're now going to do is look at another algorithm which has been written inside pseudocode. And this algorithm is a little bit simpler. And this is how we would be able to complete a truth table for a pseudocode algorithm. So first of all, identify the purpose. So if we first of all look, we've got our input values at the top here, which we're going to enter. And remember, we have got index, which is set to zero. So that's going to be put into our table for count zero to seven. We need to also put count into our table as well, as that is also set to zero. And then our condition here is if value is greater than 50. So if it's greater than 50 and this is true, we're going to execute this part of the algorithm. If one of the values is not 50, we are going to skip the if. We're going to go to in, uh, we're going to go to end if. We're going to increment our counter until counter is equal to seven. So 58 is our first value. 58 is greater than 50. So the answer to this is true. Yes. So we're going to go on to the then part and then pass marks index. So this again is a one dimensional array here. We're going to put value into index and index is zero here. Now, for those of you which are familiar with pseudocode at IGCSE, uh, if you remember pseudocode and flow charts, their indexes rich, uh, really should be starting at one. It is Python that starts at zero, but we can't really argue uh, with that in an exam paper question. So we're just going to accept that and we're just going to put the value at index zero here. But typically other past paper questions have the indexes starting at one and not zero. Moving past this, we're going to increment our index and we are going to do next count. You can see how our values have changed. And then we have got the value 40. Now 40 is not greater than 50. So we're going to skip the if statement. We're going to go to next count and you'll be able to see that nothing has been appended into our one dimensional array here. Now I'm going to fast forward through this and you'll be able to see that each time we're entering these pieces of data. So we're down to six at the moment and the last value is going to be 82. Currently, nothing is being output until we get to the end of our algorithm here. We've just entered 82, so it's greater than 50. So we're going to append this piece of data into index four of pass marks. Next count, we've already counted up to seven. So this means it's going to allow the algorithm to stop. And we're then going to output the number of pieces of data which have been passed successfully through this algorithm. And this is the end of the question. Now, as I said, with the flowcharts question and also the pseudocode question, do try to identify the purpose of an algorithm. If you are attempting past paper questions and you're unsure what is actually happening, try writing out the algorithm in your programming language, but trace tables should be relatively straightforward. Make sure all constants or variables and also any arrays which have been predefined are going at the beginning of the table and make sure you are incrementing the correct indexes uh, flags or counters within an algorithm. And if you have any questions after watching both of these examples in the video, do let me know.